waiting for and wait we did astralis versus dignitas going live in front of our eyes on the pistol round of train my name is mitch alongside myself is going to be the beautiful dean and we are going to take you through this final series of the night it's been a nine and a half hour long day we're tired but this should give us a burst of energy to close out the evening dignitas on the t side already looking to move into that a bomb site with a split through ivy but there's cts everywhere yeah, as they jump out through the smoke, Get Right does find one, but you see Device been able to return, as do Glaive and Magisk, and the bomb dropped out in the open. And Dig really just trying to recover what they can right now. It's not looking too great. Big kill at least being done by Halzerk, but at this point, left alone in position is also known, and all three of them are just facing them at the same time. But Nate, I don't think actually landing any damage. He did manage to catch one more as he swung back in, but that's going to be it. The Vice trades back, Astralis, they pick up the open and pistol round, and obviously we didn't get a chance yet to actually mention on the VO, so while we have a bit of downtime here, we can go ahead and bring that up. This here, being Train, of course, is the map choice of Dignitas. We then have Dust2 coming up next, being the pick of Astralis, and if needed, Nuke is the decider, which is, of course, how we ended out that previous series uh, series as well. I mean, the VO went pretty well for Dignitas, if we're being honest, but obviously coming into this matchup against Astralis, they are definitely going to be the underdogs no matter what. Yeah, there was no situation where they ended up coming in with... Huge amounts of favor, but they're not being punished too hard. Early on, Magus in with the push. Sees the Glock's going to drop a nade and fade back. No, actually sticking around to try and punish them. But instead, he gets domed. The danger of aggressing, especially in towards such a choke point angle versus these pistols with an M4 is that maybe they pick up the rifle. And that's exactly what they're going to try to do. Crossing over Glaive, who gets an extra tag. But overall, a, a positive early round for Dignitas. Although making it work is going to be difficult considering none of these players have armor to work with. So that only really gives you that first bullet extra bit of damage and you're probably going to be reacted on. They've already spotted the B's not going to be an option. So faster play towards the A bomb site might come through. A smoke and play for Forest. A couple of very small positives. Any extra damage they can get. Look if they can kill one more player and even stop them from saving this M4. It could even be a shout now in a 2v4 to just throw it off the map. Potentially. I, I would imagine that they, they probably should have stuck together here. In that case, Forrest could have still looked for a kill if he went down. If they were continuing the progress, then maybe Fiverr could have retrieved it and tossed it away. But no, not going to be allowed. Dupree will get himself that upgrade back onto the rifle. So not really much at all being lost in that round because they retrieved that. So it's only really the MP9 that they lose out on. Obviously, it was a full eco in that round from Dignitas. So you weren't really expecting a lot. One kill is something they can be pretty happy with. Now that they are coming out onto the full buy. But overall, it's a, a pretty solid set of weaponry that Astralis do have available here. Obviously, one of the weaknesses being the scout that's kept in play. There is still the MP9 there on the ground that Clay will be going back onto. But overall, at least having the three M4s here to contest up against the full rifle by. But obviously, Dignitas, they want to be finding some success here early on with this being their map choice, especially. And you've seen Freiburg with that main spawn looking to see if he could catch the crossover towards E-Box. Didn't initially... It was Glaive that he done the damage onto, but it ended up following up with a kill elsewhere, Dan. And the flashover is perfect. Get right and Halzerk popping out. Magisk and Glaive are gone. The A-bomb site nearly completely overrun. There is still the Vice up in heaven to try and put up a defense. See if he can delay potentially for Zipix to move through, who has actually come in through to connect their smoke as well now. So this may not be expected. Unfortunately, left in the one on three. But if you want any man in a clutch, it would be Zipix. Oh, this is pretty much impossible. I honestly don't know how he lived so long right there. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Zipnix as he goes down. That is going to be Dignitas in with their first round fighting back early on. Really at their first opportunity. That second round, although they got the kill, uh, really it doesn't amount to a lot because of the SMG just being upgraded to it afterwards and the couple of SMG frags that they found. One thing you can definitely command them on is the fact that they sent the submachine guns forward first. Try and get that extra little bit of money. And now moving into this, look at the mix by Astralis are faced with. After taking the damage they did, they've got a scout, a UMP. I'm oh, sorry, two scouts actually, and a UMP alongside their M4s. Leaving Dignitas in a spot where they're pretty heavily favored when it comes down to those initial fights. Certainly within range. Although it, even with that said, Forrest has been nated down to 58, making him a one hit to the scout. So if Zipnix or Magisk can get themselves a sight line on him, be a free kill. Fighting for this is actually really important because if they lose, the eco after puts three rounds on the board for Dignitas. And out of the first five, that's a very solid win rate for them to take, considering how the first two went. Certainly, and it 
it is definitely a possibility. A little bit of damage, as you said, done early on, definitely helping out these uh, scouts, especially on the side of Astralis. Walter ended up getting tagged by one there as he was trying to actually go through the smoke, and the Vice just retrieving the AK, spams in, finds the head of Exist. There is still Freiburg up close who may be looking to try and get this train, eventually held off for a few second, uh, seconds by the smoke, but is eventually able to go forward and get that return. So the AK doesn't stay in the hands of Astralis for long, but they have the man advantage, and they have three players actually tagged down into a position where those scouts are one shot to the body. Um, well, I get, I mean, get right could be a bit iffy. Sometimes it does 71, depending on the range, I believe. But far as far as good spot. Without a doubt, go down to the scouts. But Debris not able to catch an angle. That's the second M4 gone. The scout from afar not able to tag Freiburg up. And as he swings out wider, Glaive is tucked away. They have no idea about his position. They should suspect the player Pop Dog, but the angle was superior as they were holding for Pop. Forrest goes up close, tries to deal with the UMP, but just biding time for Zipnix to get into position and let the time run on down. Astralis taking it and not even fighting afterwards. I think Zipnix might have run out of ammo. So he doesn't even go in for the duel with Forrest to take him down after time. But even without that, a buy is going to be hard to muster. Exist, Freiburg, they can get a couple of weapons out. But for Halzer can get right, that's not quite possible. And perhaps they're even thinking about it as you see a timeout come through. The other possibility is for Exist and Freiburg to drop over pistols and... And even then, get right in Halzer, grabbing themselves armor is going to really limit them in the future. So it is a very difficult decision to make, and I think the pause definitely reflects that. Yeah, I mean, I think Exist, I was going to say, I think Exist and Freiburg just going for the pistols and Kevlar and giving themselves the chance to keep the damage on in this round alongside the run one rifle would have been a pretty good play, but they're going to go for the buy, again, knowing that they didn't let more than just a single player survive during that previous round for Astralis, knowing that they've scraped out all, whatever they can as well with their own money, meaning they're going to have some weaknesses certainly as well. So they have the opportunity, if they can pull this right back at that point, to break the economy of Astralis, leaving them on a double eco where they'll be forcing up and only being able to afford pistols and Kevlar. So they want to keep that pressure on. Obviously, though, losing this round at that point very likely gives Astralis a 5-1 to one lead. So it's a... Uh, it's, it's high risk, high reward, and it is going to be a tough one for them for sure. We're seeing aggression immediately from Zipex up towards B. Obviously, knowing that Get Right is close to the smoke at this point as the Molotov came true. I'm expecting maybe for Get Right to actually push a little bit more aggressively himself, but we're not really going to be seeing that. He only has a CZ, and I believe we'll have actually heard those footsteps there as Zipex faded back away. But that, that was probably for the best. Not wanting to risk staying around with those weaker weapons still in play. But at the moment, over towards B, we are seeing... Uh, over towards Ivy, we are seeing a little bit of contact. The smoke was down. It was, uh, I believe, placed as soon as that contact was found. The scout was just trying to spam away with a bit of damage. And really not much has happened so far in this round. It is just that standard default. The T's are looking to try and split and pick. And have just taken quite a bit of considerable damage in the last couple of seconds. Not sure exactly where that happened. We didn't catch it. Is definitely still looking to be in towards A. Dignitas showing heavy preference towards this, but not able to get control down in Pop Dog as Device, the leads get right, now able to completely focus himself up towards main as they come barreling out, looking for Olaf control, but losing another along the way. The spam through, through the smoke, in fact, even dropped the bomb, leaving Dignitas now clutching, trying to grab it back. As Exist comes out, he grabs Zipnix. That could be the kill that opens it up for Freiburg to come on the flank, but he misses the spray at first, almost putting him down. Almost being the keyword because he then got help from Halzerk. You have Exist coming in from Ivy again, getting his second kill of the round, and suddenly the vice is left alone. He'd been given the room to push through B and get that flank earlier because of the control they found in the beginning of the round. I was going to say, but it's going to be tough for him to get a lot more done. But as he gets that kill, I mean, both of these remaining players are extremely low. Obviously, not knowing the position, didn't spot the head, apparently, of the player in the word. Sandwich won't expect him to be up on blue train, and Halzerk will find the trade. But the vice, a nice attempt from him there to bring it down to the 1v1. Unfortunately, it is not enough. As we said, now Astralis, their economy is in absolute bits. They're going to buy what they can. It's a scout and some pistols, as we'd expect. And an opportunity for Dignitas, if they can overcome this force by to take themselves the lead here early on on train. We've already seen some good damage from Astralis on rounds like this, but a couple of missed scout shots, really all that stood between them and the win. Dignitas will be a little bit worried about it, especially considering where their economy is at. With two SMGs, they should be able to take care of pretty much everyone on the CT side in those fights, with the exception of Device. Zipnix, who was hoping to get aggressive and 
Get a quick tag as they came down B is kept back by a Molotov and eventually makes the correct decision to fall back, not knowing how many players are going to await from there. He could swing into one, get a headshot and have a great opening or into four and just get completely firing squatted. This definitely is the, the right call. Dupree makes it into team main. Whether he sticks around or not, well, that determines is determined by the fight. As Forrest takes him down and opens things up, Team Main is back secure, and Dignitas concede that control to play a much more passive game. They're not happy with the opening that they've found. You never know what Astralis are going to do when they're on these kind of rounds. Already a Deagle spotted pushing up. There could be two, three more on their way. So it's time to slow down the play, execute in, and push in as a team. The only real concern is Freiburg, who's towards Ivy by himself, but with a MAC-10, that's a player you're happy to allow play, make those solo plays in a round like this. Yeah, it can act as a little bit of a scout, despite it being the MAC-10 that he has in his hands. Oh, okay, Device has actually gone ahead and found Freiburg pretty early on. It's not like he got to see a lot about what was actually happening from that position. The MAC-10 from Ivy probably not going to do a lot with the main push coming out of A-Main, at least until they close in the distance. But Glaive is, again, limiting the numbers. A nice shot with the Deagle being connected. Device got a small opportunity there. Wasn't able to connect, but he has repositioned. So moving forward onto this bomb site could still be costly for them. Halzerk eventually pulling one back. And I believe that'll give them the room now to go ahead and plant the bomb without really much being done. The spam under actually does some small damage. Halzerk down to 40 or so. The shot being connected by Zipix. It really didn't matter because he got the headshot. I was actually, sorry, the Deagle of matches to finish off the low player, but it's all on Forest. That's the main thing. A one on three initially. He's got that first kill, which at this point does let him focus towards Ivy. Max. He should know both players are coming from this position, and he tries to swing in and catch one, but it is not allowed. Zipix with the second headshot for himself that round. Plenty of time for the defuse, and Astralis fight right back in with their force bite. This is what we were saying, Dean. That kind of a buy from Astralis has almost had the win before, and it's exactly why Dignitas should have been afraid. Now, with the position their money is in, a buy is impossible. They could go in for pistols and possibly a little bit of armor, but it's going to be very limited outside of that. A smoke here or there to possibly allow a faster play in towards B. They haven't spotted the early aggression of Zipnix in the round before with the scout, so trying to isolate the fight upper is unlikely. But they are going towards B, at least for now towards the upper side, taking the left route as well, which can make a little bit of noise, so they'll shift afterwards. Not wanting to give away any steps. This is looking like it will be a much faster play, but no armor. Couple of upgraded pistols and not a smoke to play with. That's another reason they have to take this so slowly. Evidently hoping that someone would be holding towards upper B that they could swing on together with these pistols. Nobody is here. And a drop down now to try and get the plant is the best option. Unfortunately, it's against the op of the vice. I was going to point out it was glass cannon. I was going to say it might not matter too much, but he is actually taken down by the P250. And that gives them the bomb plant. So that's a pretty decent find. But Zipix and Dupree, they come in to clean up. And it will only be that single casualty. So obviously the op can easily be retrieved as well. So overall, I mean, Dignitas, they can be pretty happy with how that round went. One kill and a bomb plant, considering they had so little investment. As you said, hadn't even bought up any utility for themselves. So overall, they will be happy, but... Down 5-2 to two at the moment. They want to start picking up a few more rounds on this T side. It's all about grinding out the rounds, to be fair. And if they can pull it up to 6 or so, I think that's kind of the minimum num number that they're looking for in order to actually be happy with it. But ideally, you want to start picking up a few of those earlier on in the half, just to give yourself that security so you're not really fighting in from behind so massively. But they're back on the buy, and this time they do have the off for Halzerk to work with. That's one very important fact. He'll have that to challenge against the Vice now. Indeed he does, but early taking it towards upper B to try and spot for anybody getting aggressive there. They're causing a little bit of noise to try and bait them out if they were up close. Call would come in from Zipnix, and maybe an opera would come through to try and get greedy where Halsworth could punish them. But that's not the case. Not for now. As he sits staring at an empty hallway, the time will run down that little bit more. Now, when you look at this round, a pick with that AWP is actually going to be one of the better opportunities for Dignitas. They're heavily limited in utility, especially oh. losing Forrest. That's hurt them even more. He was one of the only players with a smoke, although I believe they've retrieved it. Putting it on three smokes on the board, a push towards B seems like the, the easiest to manage with this limited enough utility. You still need one for pushing in in case of a Molotov. They haven't baited out a huge amount of utility. Certainly not towards B, where Zipnik still has his Molotov. Although that said, Astralis did use their utility. 40 seconds. Lily, Lily. I love it. <laughs>
40 seconds this will be a push in to b with the bomb still outside of it the time to rotate is fairly limited although they have got pop dog control exist is making that noise and that very much indicates that we're we're faking it out a little bit Considering Freiburg's towards Ivy as well, though, it does make it a little bit more convincing if he was to be spotted. Right now, though, he hasn't actually shown himself as of yet. He's trying to creep into the back line, and, I mean, that could be even better if he can make it in behind. The issue is he doesn't have much time at all to do so, has finally been spotted, but he needs his teammate moving out onto B, or his teammates moving out onto B to actually find success, and there you go, Halzerg. He gets the trade. It's going to at least give them the bomb plant, but unfortunately, the one on, th the one on three that he's left in is going to be so difficult, but barely, barely any held. What the hell? Halzerg, he hits another shot quickly, but the flank is just not expected he left me speechless with that one honestly i figured he was screwed two players surviving a little bit of extra damage at least again being connected but without the full loss bonus going even the bomb plant isn't going to be enough to actually give them a solid buy here so i think again we may see dignitas being forced onto kind of the half investment doing what they can to keep the damage on the economy at least of astralis who again still haven't built up much money at all themselves i mean they barely have one in the reserve on three of the players the other two then would be in a pretty tough spot if they were to lose this round unfortunately as we as i just pointed out the economy is not giving dignitas a full buy so this is their chance to try and take a clean round in that previous when you see freiburg moving across and he's spotted down towards ct at the back of ivy that actually caused glaive to rotate and normally that would have been bad because well he was uh he was still around the site when they pushed it actually gave halzerk the kill this time the rush down through the ramp is being torn apart not a kill from the t side just yet although get right gets close with the tech nine and has gone under the radar right beneath the smoke but as he sprays through his position is revealed they know where he is and also he had the bomb so they can't plant it which is kind of unfortunate because it was completely clear behind them so it doesn't look like they'll be getting a bomb plant damage under dupree they follow it up as well it's possible with an awp especially freiburg spotted by magisk though good damage just a shame that freiburg didn't have the bomb in that situation to get the plant while get right was harassing up close and also that explains why he spammed through the smoke instead of uh trying to sneak through because if he sneaks through with the bomb and gets killed well that's not a good situation, is it? Whereas if Freiburg had it, I imagine Get Right would have played sneaky bomb plants as they push forward. He kills them. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a two-way street. The bomb plant obviously would have helped out with Halzerk and such having extra utility here. But being able to get that extra kill, bringing it down to only two surviving for Astralis, again, has forced them to expend pretty much all of the money they made from that previous round where they did actually manage to keep four alive. It's actually been two in a row now where they've lost. It was the one before that where they kept four alive. So yeah, I mean, again, their economy is still really low. There's an opportunity for Dignitas to take one round and start bouncing back from it. But not a great start. You do finally see that upper aggression that for a few times, uh, a few rounds, we did actually see Dignitas perhaps expecting, putting the op around that area. This time the smoke was down, the nade in behind it. It actually tags exist and get right up fairly substantially. But they're going straight out of heaven. I don't think this is expected by Zipix. Yeah, they've already dropped down before he has any idea. The Molotov at least towards the lower ramp, slowing that part of the push, but the smoke quickly does extinguish it, giving them the room to get all of these players a bit more aggressive for the afterplant as the bomb goes down. Good nade returned onto Freiburg. Three of these now low. As Astralis take their time, they're grouped up. Look at this. The density of the team as they move forward and Dignitas not going to get more than one surely on a lot of these angles. Even Glaive shutting them down one at a time. It's all down to two and exists in with one, but not able to double that up. Halzerk with the op shot from afar. He missed it and that's it. He has to bait the shot of device and go for the planter. But Magisk is there as well to take him down as he swings wide. Astralis now on eight to two. A really solid CT side built up for them. You, know, you do have to remember Dust2 is up next. And I don't think that's a map where Dignitas are going to be entirely out of it. It is always a risky one to pick, but if Astralis dominate them here on train, then, well, hope does start to fade just a, just a tid. Yeah, Dust2 isn't a great map for Dignitas. Their last few games, I know, have been kind of shaky for them. I think they've lost their last three games on Dust2 16-11, actually. But the one before that was actually when they were able to, uh, to upset Fnatic. So, <laughs> I mean, who knows? There's always op an opportunity with these players. It seems like out of nowhere they can step up, but... So far on train, we're not really seeing that from them. It definitely seems like Astralis have pretty firm control for themselves. Halzerk, though, does catch Dupree trying to spam away through the smoke. The vice was ready as he came back through. Magisk as well on the secondary off going to be able to get one. But it is still the three on three for now. And Forrest has creeped out in towards Olaf. With that will catch Magisk peeking in, I think the Molotov gone down 
He, he was using that to cover off one side so he could peek in and hold main instead. It just didn't work out for him. But again, constant trades back and forth. Neither team really able to get firm control for long. And that was a, a big opportunity for, for a device that unfortunately he did miss. That was... Oh, and just <laughs> didn't expect him to go back towards Ivy, apparently. He just spotted him CT and thought he'd obviously crossed right, but... No. And the Zipnix was last spotted towards Pop Dog, but we're talking 20 seconds ago. They're aware he could be in connector, but they're not ready to take him down. The master of clutches in with an opening duel, and now just Forrest to contend with. He knows where he is. The Molly is going to be late, though. They will stop him falling back. The spray underneath, sadly, not going to be landing as Forrest jumps up on top to aggressively close the round out and put three on the board for Dignitas. They needed it, no doubt about it. And Astralis at this point. Look at their cash. It's actually not great, despite the lead that they had. Six rounds ahead of their opponents and a strikingly large amount of rounds won in a row. And here they are, having to take a UMP and a scout without armor into, into the round. Yeah, it actually been five in a row. And other than uh, before that, rather, it just been trading back and forth as well. So they never really lost control until this moment when their economy, unfortunately, has left in a pretty awkward spot. A one-for-one one trade initially is not the worst scenario for them to be in, if we're being honest. Another couple opportunities as well arising for Magisk on the M4. He was the one to actually find that opening kill, of course. The distance that was really being closed in by Dig. Actually going through the smokes as well. Freiburg catches Glaive. Get right up on top of the bomb train. Gonna find Zipex coming in through Connector. And now it's all on Magisk and Device, the two M4s that are in play. Magisk, though, unfortunately, with the effort of getting those first two kills, has already been taken low. Although they may not expect the vice hiding in on the bomb site, tries to peek around, but he's the one instead to be caught off guard by Get Right, who was actually holding up close. That was a nice shot, to be fair, but Exist was also peeking ready for the trade. Eight to four, Dignitas are able to chain together two rounds for the first time here on train, and off the back of it, should be able to find themselves a third with a th because I probably didn't say that right. I never know. <laughs> I, I try and say it right, but I never actually know if I have. I'm always thinking, oh god damn, is there gonna be a t or each? Just spamming the chat now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I think you were you were as close to all right as close I close enough as close as an as Irish person can get. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I can say it all right. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but you're like really good at doing a fake American accent for some reason. The, the diversity of my genes, great. Ironically, you only own, you, for a while you only owned one pair of genes. <laughs> yeah, the diversity was low then, but we're good now. Good this opening is... kills. It is against the ego. We're not expecting much less. It's, uh, no, Dean, sorry. You're supposed to hype these rounds. Uh, Twitch chat told me a while back. What a shot! Oh, how did he not win that? Magisk, surely going to get the 1v5. No, I mean, it, it's a round where Astralis clearly had very little to say about it, despite that a good bit of damage done. If it's a round like this, four USPs and a scout, okay, then we're interested. That's somewhere we can actually see a fight come through. But Astralis aren't investing a dime. They couldn't afford to. Moving into the next round... They will be able to get the M4s out, armor as well, utility is somewhat limited. The advantage of not having to buy head armor will certainly come through for at least one extra nade. Get right on a Galil. He's rubbing his hands together when he hears no one's going to have the helmet. That could be his opportunity. A timeout comes through from Astralis just to properly deploy their um, utility. Actually, Magisk, he's gone glass cannon. A scout comes through on Zipnix. They need the extra, and in fairness, especially when you're playing in towards, although I know he is on the B site, and if they're going to leave him solo, a Molotov is essential. But if you're playing towards A as well, you do want that uh, Molotov that's on device. Maybe even one more. I know they haven't been able to get one, but they'll definitely have wanted that. Just to slow down any aggression coming out of Team A. And thus far, though, I think Dignitas at most, really, you're expecting one player to be pushing out and trying to sneak into Olaf. Forrest managed that a couple of times, but they're not a team that typically, especially against Astralis, are going to come out and say, let's just rush team A and see how it goes. Yeah, not not commonly, but I mean, coming into this gun round, they should know that the nades are certainly going to be lacking for Astralis, so it could be perhaps a reaction to that, but no, not going to be the case. Just going a little bit more standard, actually grouping up all in the B hall, so we might be seeing a bit of a quicker B play perhaps coming in instead. A small bit of info being found there early on from Astralis. They do also have the Vice in Pop Dog who could potentially get on a quick flank. So this isn't going to be easy by any means, but the scout for now going to be forced back into playing a little bit more passively. There is still one player up close, Zipex. I don't think quite connecting that shot. It looked like it was on the head. Glaive's only able to find one as they drop down, well, drop down, but Dupree in position. And there we go, the flank I had mentioned from the vice. It did indeed come in. He's able to deny that bomb from being planted and, and get right in Freiburg. Unfortunately, already been tagged up or left alone to try and save this round. And 
But it now would just be in Freiburg, despite getting one kill. You can't really fancy his chances. He actually had two already in that round. But there it is. Three survive for Astralis. They bring it up to nine. They are able to bounce back once they get the guns in play again. I think ideally, to feel happy with how this half has gone, they might want to get that tenth round for themselves. Obviously, nine is still a pretty decent score. But considering they were up so massively at one point, they were up eight to two. They probably want to bring it up to double digits at least. There is definitely the excuse to come through, though. It has been a solid CT side from Astralis so far. Dignitas made... Uh, those two rounds happen, push them to an eco. The fact that they're on five now, regardless of how they've ended here, though, is solid. And for Astralis coming in with two UMPs isn't ideal. They're going to go more aggressive with the op that they have. Magis, he's getting tagged, but somehow still takes down Ooh. a second as well. What is that? Magis is an animal. Glaive wins a duel on a UMP as Freiburg tried to fade through the smoke. And it's a 2v4. All of a sudden, the weaker weapons don't matter. They're gone. They're upgraded. We caught a moment of Get Right flying through the air, and then he got a kill after we had swapped away, so I'm not sure how that one panned out. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the only frag they've found, found back so far. Forrest is barely hanging on to life, as was Get Right, as you said, having taken so much damage. And that it's now the one on four. Forrest is going to have to find a miraculous clutch right now if he wants to bring Dignitas up to six rounds at the halftime. He'll need to also find some pretty big mistakes being made by Astralis, likely. is creeping forward. Could maybe walk this in towards B. And for the moment, I mean, the sole defender on B is Dupree. He's pushed in towards Heaven. Probably the correct decision since he is so low. Oh, Magisk apparently didn't see Forrest there. He had a nade in his hand either way, so he was screwed. I think Forrest was <laughs> just waiting a second to see if anyone else would show themselves. Oh, but there we go. Yeah, indeed. The device is going to be able to get that. Everybody, we've got to jump right on into the pistol round. Astralis already blitzing out. Pop, they went to upper B early. Only 10 seconds in. We're all good. And it's going to be a little bit of a fake. They're heading up towards the B site instead. And all by his lonesome here on the site. Exist is trying to create some distance, but couldn't get it done. Yeah, I mean, they are actually going to be able to make their way on towards this bomb site. As you said, not enough, unfortunately, by Exist. We end up seeing Magisk as well, then taking down Halzerk long range. As that P250 does come in clutch, and look at that, the flash over. Forrest is caught completely blinded. Despite having some support, they weren't able to chime in until he did go down, but they have again returned it now to a two on two. But I don't think they expect this quick connector flank. Neither of them at the moment are going to be looking back, even being cautious. The Glock, though, not ideal for Zipix. If Magis goes down on the bomb site, they're in a lot of trouble, but he will get that first kill on Freiburg. At least delay a small bit, but get right actually as a kit. He's just going to smoke a hop on the bomb. Zipix has to get in, spamming away, and hope he can find that kill, but he won't in time. Get right comes in clutch. Every time we've seen that from get right on the pistol round in this series, the one we covered the other day, last week on Nuke, every single time he's getting caught on the spin move. It, it, I want to see him get away with it eventually. But not this time, says Astralis, as they put double digits on the board, 10 to 6. And with the bomb blind as well. They got it. They got it. Oh wait, what? I, I can I'm gonna guess you were fixing something to do with production. I was I was fixing the hood. I actually did not see him get that. Broken. I, yeah, I no, looked just up about as got he got it. was a millisecond or so. I literally looked up as he got the kill and didn't see the the hood come up. That's You're incredible. You're producing and casting. We'll let you away with that. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> Gotta do a few things at once. It is how it is. Sometimes you I'm miss. Sure, those. I'm sure chat will be fair on you though. Oh, <laughs> definitely. You you can always guarantee that. What we will be fair on is the fight that Device goes into onto Freiburg. It's a really nice opening to have, but low HP on the AK. Probably time to go and make that a little bit of a swap with Dupree if he, they happen to cross paths. Not the biggest of deals. I was originally going to say Magisk, and then I noticed he couldn't afford any armor, given, given over the rifle. Good dude. Selfless guy. And hey, also I'm happy, Dean, because we got to see Get Right get away with it. That's a 50% success right now. On higher in the deep, I don't think they're allowed higher the DPI, so I think he's just spinning his wrist really, really fast. He wasn't spinning that quick, to be fair. It was quick yes. enough, but it wasn't as quick as you've seen other people do. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't crazy. It wasn't like clear, super high DPI in sense. All drifting. Uh, but I haven't lost the player, obviously, to kick this round off to device with the rifles that are in play for Astralis. This is really dangerous because losing this round that follows up the pistol can be more harmful because obviously at that point, the loss bonus only going to be 1400 that they'd achieve. Setting themselves up for an A play right now. That clearly is the goal for Astralis. 35 seconds remaining as they do move forward. And it's relatively passive right now by the CT side. They're only going to be finding the info in about the next couple of seconds that the push is actually in. And unfortunately, they find out with the kills that are found by Astralis. Exist, though, coming in big from Pop Dog. That MP9 gets a double and the Vice left on only 23 health up against two opponents. It's not very likely. And yeah, Gatwick is going to confirm that that's not going to be the case. He gets himself that second, I believe it was the second kill of the round, and with that, it is a seventh for Dignitas, and likely an eighth off the back of it, because this one has to be the eco. 
And right now, Astralis returning to a little bit of form with Device rocking through 19 kills on the board. Saw a couple of games the other day where Glaive was up the top. That was a bit surprising. Versus Heretics. He's doing incredibly well. I think it was on Dust 2 as well. Just dominating a lot of those ranged fights. A 10 to 7. Dignitas pushed her opponents down to just pistols as Astralis should be hurting. They've gone for a little, little bit of an upgrade. They just have that extra bit of bank, so why not? P250s and a Deagle. As we said before, when we saw Dignitas on uh, these kind of buys, and when we see Astralis there, they can do damage. But when you come into train, it is a map where it's much more difficult to make them happen. Luckily, Magisk has found a mid-range fight to Forrest, who is up on top of the trains, and taking him down on the A-bomb site. They have no idea about what's sitting outside of P, but a nice little spray from Exist catches one. Dupree fakes out the bomb, hoping that the player will come close. Oh, but the P250 not able to find it today. And Device quickly shut down. Eight rounds on the board for Dignitas. Done relatively cleanly. And there you see Exist popping on down. What well, wouldn't be happening if I didn't fix the hood earlier. You're welcome. But uh, the impact player. Two kills in the round. 189 damage. Versus pistols. Bomb plant. Impressive. That, that bomb plant would have been a really nice bonus in this round. You see without it, Device doesn't have yeah. the helmet, unfortunately. Not a as big of a deal considering there is two AKs in play, but there's an AUG and two M4s as well, so it could maybe impact them. He would have got an extra few nades otherwise also, but they were looking for the extra kills, which, all, which also would have made sense. So it's all about kind of the gamble, risk and reward at that point as B aggression though. The Dignitas could catch them off guard. Zipix, I believe, tossing the flash in. It must have blinded up Halzerk as he goes down in the background, exists at least able to return, and with that even escapes, giving a bit of room for Get Right to pounce the Pop Dog as they were distracted and actually pull an advantage in favor of Dignitas. That is a fantastic position for them to find early on, and it seems like Astralis now feeling forced to commit to B. Dupree shifting right to the edge of that smoke, but wise enough not to go through it. Exist is still waiting on the other side. He shut them down on the pistols and made sure no plan came through. This time it's Forrest from afar that's going to be helping him out. And the swing from Exist, he wasn't spotted behind the spools. They couldn't see him. And that should be the round concluded. Device, a big clutch to make happen. Gets around the corner, I'll never understand how. The player just baiting him out on the ladder. Flank coming up as well. Get right's got up above pop. There's no way out. Device really needs to make a move at the end of the day. 40 seconds on the clock. They'll come in for him eventually, but they'll be happy to let the clock run as far down as he wants before killing him. Hopefully all the way in their eyes. Yeah, I don't know if he maybe would just want to move forward to ensure he dies before the time runs out, but... That's a, a risky one either way, but he's creeping forward, looking to see if he can spot anyone. Maybe take a couple more with him before he does eventually go down, but not going to be allowed. Forrest was a little bit further back right there, had the angle ready and prepared. One to the body was all that was needed, and that was easily achieved. One round now in the difference. Dig actually finding the opening four here on their CT side, getting off to a good start off the back of the pistol, and of course off the back of that opening gun round as well now. As Astralis are back on pistols, we should see this actually being tied up. And overall, I mean, the damage hasn't been incredible. There is a bit of money on most of the players there for Dig. And obviously with the chance to try and actually increase that here in this round. Ideally, not wanting to lose more than one player. When you're against a team like Astralis, you need to have that money in the reserve for when... For if you do lose a round, I want to say for when you do lose a round. Because they are Astralis after all. But there's the opening kill from Halzerk. That helps them deal with the pistols a small bit. I do want to avoid any over the aggressive angles coming into it for Astralis. Where they're going to take it is a hard one to call. They already get up close and take get right down. He waltzed right back into Pop Dog, which is exactly what Glaive with a Tech 9 was hoping would come through. Now an AK in his hands, but no armor. It'd be nice if he could get that over to Magisk or Dupree. But in this position, I think it would just cost them a little bit too much time. Give up map control and for, you know, not the biggest of rewards, really. For what you've given up. One minute on the clock. They have got plenty of time to work around. The bomb sat outside of the A bomb site with a little bit of utility. That's just presumably going to be throwing a smoke and a flash forward. Glaive has his own to work with. But not currently in a position to do a lot. I'm really just hoping that their opponents will get aggressive. Eventually, they're going to pop out the utility, start to move forward. The Alper already spotted. They're going to keep on facing with the Deagles. And he'll get scared once they get close. But no, he just actually swings out to close it. Good stuff by Hauser. And Forrest cleaning it up. Only one player lost. No weapon save for the T side. 
The economy's not looking too bad for Dignitas either. Astralis need to make this one work. And not just because of the position the score is in. Like 10 to 10. Yeah, this is this is fine. They can still work from here. But the fact is Dignitas are going to completely let that economy get out of control over on the CT side. And if Astralis don't at least find a lot of impact, and at this stage, really, it's about winning the round, then they'll be in pretty dire circumstances. That is the issue. I mean, it was such a fantastic first half as well from Astralis. Dignitas shown though why they actually chose this map. As we said, moving on to Dust 2 next, it's not necessarily a bad map for Dig, but up against Astralis, that's going to be a tough one. So they do need to win here on trend. So it is good to actually see them get off to a good start here. But back onto the buy. As you said, Astralis needing this round. They have the off. They have everything they could really ask for. The only, I guess, shortage in terms of the buy would be the fact that the vice is a little bit low on nades. Could maybe do it a pistol behind the up, but that's me really kind of clawing for negatives at this point. Trying to reach for them. Ooh. We actually, I, for some reason, had my Observer off. We've seen Halzerk actually finding that opening kill, and Freiburg was following it up as well over towards Ivy. So within just seconds of this round beginning already, we see Astralis left in the 3-on-5, and Dupree, realizing that they're in such a difficult spot, is trying to force the play out towards A. He will have a player, I believe, now following up through Pop Dog as well, and they do catch Forest off guard. It's the up towards Ivy, though, that they still have to deal with. And Halzerk, he is not shying away from continuing to actually aggress to try and find these fights. Spots two of them out around the prey train, uh, the ground train, rather. Repeeks in as well and actually finds play. That drops the bomb, that gives them the info now that that is around this area so they can get the rotates in. As it's now a three on two. Astralis being delayed massively and just constantly losing players. It's now all on the pre. He needs the ace clutch. He does know where at least two of the players are, I believe. Maybe not sure about Get Right, actually. Yeah, will be taken down then from Ivy as he peeks in. 11 to 10. Dignitas have gone ahead and taken themselves the lead for the first time in this map, actually. Well, you're seeing the impact now coming through from Halzerk on that AWP. You're hoping maybe the reaction would be there from Astralis, but consistently helping out on that A, a hold. And with the money built up, like we said, this is the issue. Astralis losing that one puts Dignitas so far ahead economically because, well, realistically, we've seen this kind of buy before. One player dropped. Dignitas should be even more cautious of it this time, knowing that there's extra utility, that there's extra armor to work with, and they're starting a very quick play. Freiburg gets a nade down, but actually lets a couple of them out. They're already at the site. A communication comes through a little late. Halzerk already tagged up and taken down, and this is looking so good for Astralis. Device with a double kill. Slippery. He just comes through Ivy, and all of a sudden they've got a bomb plant, and a, a huge advantage. How's this happened? Yeah, but a ridiculous amount of damage was done. The vice was also on around three health, I believe. He gets taken down by the nading connector, but three of the remaining four are barely alive. So this is still really achievable for Dig as they move in with these rifles. Nades wise, just the one flash, and that's not going to be thrown out as of yet. And Magisk on the Deagle takes off the head of Exist, knows that Get Right has gone up in towards Heaven. Freiburg, though, still moving on the ground, looking to try and clear out as many positions as he can. Gets two, but Dupree coming in from Ivy, not quite finding the frag. But he got them off the bomb for a second to spin again. Will they be able to stop it this time? There we go, Glaive. He's won the round for them. And it was also, of course, the Vice who came up massive with those two openings on towards the bomb site. Dignitas won that round. I'm joking. I'm joking this time. Don't panic, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Astralis. There's no way. Coming into that round, the chances of them, of them winning are so low. The timing they got moving through Ivy really is what just tore that round apart. The fact that a player is able to slip in towards the bomb site, Freiburg throws a nade at just the wrong time, swings to try and kill him but can't do it. Halzerk is here and they're through Ivy, but he's not here and they're through Ivy, if you get what I'm saying. He just gets domed in the side of the head by a Tech-9. Can't hear a thing with all the ringing. Then taken out. And bombsite overrun, device with a double, and he's opened it up this time with the AWP. Things are going so well for Astralis, and second from Magisk, and that was through the smoke. Yeah, I believe the player was completely blind as well. You can't be any more unlucky than that. Get right, eventually pulling one back, but Dupree has just gone ahead and put himself through that sandwich smoke. With that, finds Halzerk, helps out Glaive and taking down Get right, who was over towards the E box, I believe, and. With Exist being left alone in the one on four, he doesn't even want to attempt this retake anymore. He's backed away towards B in an effort to try and at least save this one rifle over into the following round where overall Dignitas really aren't going to be able to afford much. 
It's a very difficult spot to be in. They get 1,900 at least, so it won't be a double eco. So it's likely we will see them take that one eco. But of course, that means Estrella is likely finding 13 to 11 on the scoreboard. And even then, there is one player at the moment looking to hunt. I don't think you'll realize that Exist has moved in towards the ramp. So I think he should be secure there. Oh, Glaive was coming in. He gets taken down, but now they know where he is. Do they want to actually risk losing any more players? Zipnix is, is still creeping in, yeah. Sneaky Beaky like hasn't been heard. He might. I don't think he can get there in time. They've lost a player to the bomb. It would be better to hunt him down, really, wouldn't it? Not going to get there. And 12 to 11 we go. Astralis, their money is actually kind of hurting. Uh, you look at Device Dupree. The investment is starting to, to squeeze them tight. But luckily, over on the Dignitas side, things ain't too much better. This should be an opportunity to build up a little bit of bankroll and rock into the next round with the gold chains on. 3,900 on exist. They will definitely have an AWP out in the next. But the chances of... Oof, the chances of this going their way just to decrease a whole lot. We've got a Zeus, though. Alzerk trying to use it, but he doesn't get the opportunity as they start moving into the woods. Pop dog. The Zeus is clearly a round winning weapon. <laughs> I mean, it can be if you steal away a rifle, but the damage early on, he's still going aggressive with the Zeus and hands as well. If he comes around the corner, he just can't do anything about fighting Zipix, and yeah, he goes down. There was pretty good damage actually done here, of course, by Exist as well. Into, uh, not Exist, get right in towards Pop Dog. Exist is the one who's come, uh, actually come in to retrieve the AK. And with Dupree being low, I mean, it's not completely over for them here, but I'm not expecting much more than maybe another kill or so from Dignitas. For now, the B-bomb site as well probably would be the best option for Astralis to hit with how passive it is being played. If they want to move back in through Pop Dog, of course, having to deal with that rifle. So, I mean, let's see what the goal is. Let me have a look at the bomb. He's actually over in towards A main right now. So they're definitely setting themselves up for A, but Exist could still be effective with this rifle. No, he could. He could get the opportunities if Zipnix didn't just dome his head straight off. The second he looks away, Zipnix comes down the ladder, and that is going to be a 4-2. to two. A 4v2, I should say. Dignitas, which is pistols. Looking to come back into this one and no time to really get in there and stop the bomb. Magisk has spotted one. There's the second. And a swing to finish it off. 13 on the board for Astralis. As pretty much expected. They built up a little bit of bankroll. And Dignitas, they did the same in that round. The point of taking the eco, obviously. Double up setup is a potential at the moment. Get right could purchase one, but... Not going to be doing so. Four M4s. Thankfully, we're past the age of seeing Augs in the hands of the CTs and Kriegs for the Ts. It's going to be the AWP on Halzerk. That's been doing a lot of work so far, but missing in the last couple. Starting to lose out some of those duels. With 23 kills on the board, Device is looking to do the same again. Yeah, it's not really crazy from the T side. I was going to say just really looking for that off pick with most of their players focused around main. But Freiburg was ballsy with that peak. Does work out for him. Actually follows up in a second as Glaive comes in to try and trade Halzerk. Must have moved slightly as he took that shot. Goes down to the off of Dupree and now it's Freiburg who's trapped around the E-box. Second for Dupree being found with that retrieved AWP. And suddenly it's a three on three. I mean, this has gotten into a much more awkward predicament than it should have been for Dig. And get right hiding in the smoke actually spammed down. Kind of surprised that he's come out with 70 health. Exist is on the flank, but he's not really going to be able to do anything in time to help get right. And now he's left alone in the one on two. There, there's no way they expect this so quickly, though. Oh, I believe he's been spotted around the edge of the smoke. Yeah, Zipix was able to see the leg i would imagine around the corner of it finish that one off 14 to 11 for astralis they find another gun round and likely we see dig here taking an eco so that they can afford to try and fight back in for the overtime they have gone for a pause i don't doubt that they should be taking an eco and i believe they won't be discussing the investment maybe i'm naive in that sense uh, i'd imagine that what they're going for at the moment is how do they maximize their potential and around like this, steal away a rifle or two, maybe give themselves a shot. Because realistically, the potential, if one of Forrest and Freiburg save over their money or a lot of it, they can get an op out comfortably. And the rest of the team can go in for armor, pistols, a little bit of utility on the, on the side. Scout, in fact, comes out for Freiburg, which again, another option I just overlooked. And that, we talked about the viability, just one of the earlier rounds. When you see that USP buy, 
and it's backed up by a scout. Never mind that, but you've also got deagles in play and nade on get right. Things can go very, very well if you get that damage in, but it is very contingent on Freiburg landing shots. What's odd is that it's Freiburg using it, right? And not Halzer. Hmm. Yeah, or, or Forrest even. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he, he was trying. He actually did tag up a couple of players before eventually going down. And in theory, the scout certainly can be retrieved. There's no one up towards Ivy at the moment. Instead, Forrest was on top of Blue Train, and that's given them an AK. That's even better. But they're still outmatched in terms of the, the manpower right now and in terms of the overall weaponry. And you can see, realizing they've lost an AK over towards the A bomb site, have decided to just bring it towards B, where they know the weaker weapons will still be in play. It was just that USP for Halzer as he goes down. Forrest not expecting this lurker device. Should have a kill from behind. Depends how quickly he moves in. Forrest begun to move back even. And yeah, now it's all on get right. If he can get this kill and just get the AK to save over, I think that's really best case scenario right now. It is only a tag needed on the device, but it'll have to go quick. Zibnix is coming in through connector. Hasn't spotted the device just yet. Sees that he's not out, Olaf. Gonna tuck in and maybe try... Oh, the timing! It's so bad! 20 seconds he was focused on that position for, and eventually the millisecond he turns away, around the corner comes device and takes the kill. 15 to 11. And I don't think that's the end of the world, and I don't think that's why they're behind by a little bit. Strauss at the moment, they are turning up on a whole nother level. Device has been pivotal, but even if he's not there, you've got Magisk, you've seen Zipnix. Zep, step it up in their place. And very early utility usage going out towards the A site. Nobody peeking aggressively, though. Dignitas did start to push up, but I think the smokes and the flashes coming over kind of made them uh, pull back that little bit. Dupree is very aggressive on his own right now. They had all the smokes down, so I would imagine just trying to sell out a little bit of a fake as the rest of them are moving through the B halls, but very quickly being dropped. And you can see, of course, that they did spot out that there wasn't really anyone else committing towards A. Didn't react all that quickly, so it is still exist on his own for the moment. The smoke going down does slightly delay that rotation, but they should still be able to make it in towards the back lines to help out and look at this. They have no idea. Exist creeping in. Zipix checks just in time, but he needs to win this fight, and it's not going to happen. Forrest comes in with one as well towards Magisk, and it looks like Dig may be able to fight themselves into uh, contention for just a little bit longer, at least. It's only Device and Glaive in this two-on-five, where really they shouldn't be finding much. Glaive trying to push out A, already being low. Indeed, it's an easy finish for Get Right, and you know, Device, he needs an ace clutch. If he can pick off a couple players, that would be handy enough. They do have plenty of money going into this next round. So taking even a couple of weapons out of hands of Dig just to ensure that they could potentially have a, a couple weaker ones in the next round even would be nice, but it's not going to be allowed. That was a decent shot on Freiburg, but overall for surviving is fine. They can drop a weapon to Freiburg and still have a really strong buy here in this round. That's the only thing, of course, they need to worry about. Just ensuring they're never left with an SMG or something along those lines. Three to go, Dean. The comeback could happen right back into an overtime. But Dignitas are going to have to step it up with another level of consistency to what we've seen from their CT side thus far. With Estralis still having money, a full buy of epic proportions comes through. Molly's flashes all going in. This time playing this one super passive. Device is left to hold down with the AWP on a close angle. Imagining Dignitas will get aggressive later. They don't want to give Halzerk the pick they did before, but instead it's actually Exist picking up Zipnix. That was from the ramp and possibly even through the smoke. We got over there as but the smoke was, was already yeah. bloomed. Yeah, unless he caught it just as the smoke was blooming. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine it was through the smoke, though. But just from the timing of the round. And that's worked out quite well. <laughs> Random spray. Good kill by Freiburg. We've seen actually a couple players from Astralis getting up very close in Sandwich before being spotted, but it doesn't really seem to be causing too much trouble for Dig. They're still pulling all of the kills pretty much in their favor, as it was only Freiburg so far to go down. If Forrest got this final kill, it'd be a team ace, but I don't care who gets it as long as they confirm this round win and put themselves that bit closer to the overtime, as they do end up losing one more player there from Magisk, but again, not a big issue. They have enough to reinvest on everyone here in this round, and... They will actually have likely an easier time up against an eco, I'd imagine. There's a bit of money on the vice and magisk so that they could maybe invest into pistols and Kevlar. For the vice, though, he doesn't really want to be spending too much because he wants to get the op and everything he needs in this next round. So I don't think too much will be bought up here, but they do 
They do manage to afford a small bit to keep themselves in with a chance of fighting for this round. But overall, they're going to be looking to actually try and close it out in round 30. Dignitas are bringing this very close, and the overtime is certainly still plausible, even becoming fairly likely at this point. Oh, a quick B-Rush. This is a little bit of a different approach. Alzerk must have spotted the legs there of Magisk and taken him down. As the second kill from exists, apparently not expect <laughs> expecting that player to come down the ramp. And to be, to be fair, I wouldn't either because he done it through a Molotov. That yeah, is ballsy. Bit of a surprise. Dignitas not struggling though. They're not in a spot where they've been hurt to the point of not being able to invest properly or fully into it. They've got everything they could want. Astralis in the same boat. Well, for the most part, device could be like a couple of nades. His utility belt is decisively lighter. But coming into the final round of regulation, Dignitas, one is all they need to pull this on into an overtime and potentially take down Astralis on their map pick. It is a difficult one, but they need it. Dust 2 up next, you don't want to be rocking onto that with the potential to lose the series on it. No one likes that. I don't, no one likes it on any map, but Dust 2 especially. Feels like you're coin flipping your chances to get a decider. And against Astralis, probably a, a bit of a weighted coin. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd be stacked against them a little bit for sure. But it's, as you said, it's quite possible here that we could be seeing that overtime. Astralis do at least have everything they need here in this final round to try and close it out. And we are so far seeing a little bit of a slower approach from them. Just a split up for the default. Definitely seeming like their focus will probably be towards A. Although they could, of course, also throw some smokes out towards A, bring it back towards B if they don't really want to commit. But most likely, I believe, looking for this pop dog control to set themselves up. And indeed, Glaive going to be able to drop down now alongside the Flash. They don't spot anyone. As we can see, it is actually quite passive from Dig at the moment. Sitting back with three around the bomb site and kind of just watching Ivy as well fairly passively. They do have two players stacked towards B, but they also now have Exist pushing upper B to get some info. They're going to look to just blitz out. They've got nades coming in from the T spawn. And Astralis, three players in pop dog. Exist is already starting to get suspicious and move up behind them. 25 seconds on the clock as the nades go out. And Exist could be the key player in this round. If they can just keep them back, he's got the god tier timing. Halzerk's got the god tier up though. Already in there on a double. And as he slowly moves forward, Exist is in there with a great flank and the final kill to close it out. 15 to 15. We're going to rock into an overtime, Dean. A 10k overtime. I'll resist the urge to say anything negative about it. That'll last at least 10 seconds. And as Dignitas look at it, their CT side hasn't been terrible. They definitely have the opportunity to walk into the next half with a good setup. Astralis, though, struggling in the last couple. This is where they need to step it up. Yeah, well, they won't have to worry about the economy anyway unless they lose the first two rounds in a row. So, at least for now, that's kind of out of their mind. They can get what they want into this one. The Vice does get the up, all of the nades. If he, he could actually think of behind it. So, they will like, try and actually get back into winning ways to kick off the overtime. And that's ideally what you want because Dig, after making that four round comeback to bring it into the overtime, the momentum is certainly going to be favoring them, especially being on the CT side. But I mean, it, you never know. The, the experience of both teams in this moment is going to start to shine through. And I think we're still going to have some crazy CS for sure. Astralis, though, I think changing up a bit. Going to be actually focused with most of their players over towards Ivy. Obviously, the bomb is not there. I believe it's just about Popdog moving alongside Zipix to get that upper B control. They are going to be probing around Ivy, at least. Shown some presence. The nades went in, done a small bit of damage onto Freiburg. And... There's at least two players there, I believe. is certainly going to be favoring them, especially being on the CT side. But I mean, it, you never know. The, the experience of both teams in this moment is going to start to shine through, and I think we're still going to have some crazy CS for sure. Astralis, though, I think changing up a bit. Going to be actually focused with most of their players over towards Ivy. Obviously, the bomb is not there. I believe it's just about Popdog moving alongside Zipix to get that upper B control. They are going to be probing around Ivy, at least. Shown some presence. The nades went in, done a small bit of damage onto Freiburg. And with that, they know there's at least two players there, I believe. Yeah, they are. I would imagine going to try and actually maybe get themselves a bit of control. Just to give the openings and the opportunities a little bit later on in the round. But no, not moving with that. I guess more so trying to actually bait a peek in from Dig. Yeah, hoping it would at least as well bait out some utility, but no signs of life in Ivy. Completely open. Astralis now toying with the idea of pushing forward. It's Glaive and Magisk 
limited utility on Magisk, but Glaive has got a smoke and a Molotov still up as they edge forward. Or at least one of them does. Glaive standing further back to throw in the util. Astralis are gaining control of Upper B, so they're going to attempt to get a player into CT to go on a flank while simultaneously selling a little bit of a fake. I think Magisk is going to try to fade through that smoke with a flash. Oh no, it's actually through the molly afterwards towards the site. Trying to keep these players in position, I suppose, but he's not going to expect Freiburg up close, so he gets dropped quite easily. Glaive will at least be able to find one, and with that, actually, they're going to start moving back over towards A. He has the CT spawn, he has the control to try and at least slow the rotation down, but Freiburg, of course, still being in position with six seconds left. They need to get the bomb planted, it's not allowed. And there you go, Dignitas, they kick off the overtime by winning that round as well. And that was just massive, that round right there from Freiburg. Being able to find that first player coming out of Ivy, it was interesting that they decided to wrap around with so little time, but even then, they knew there was a couple players stacked on B as well, so it was just such a tough decision to make, and unfortunately, the, the decision that they actually did make doesn't work out. I don't think anybody spotted the player coming into spawn, so I thought we were going to see the commitment as Glaive came up behind B and caught them. And only when he started to pull back and look towards the Ivy player did I realize, oh, that they have actually gone down pop. I don't think anyone bought a watch in this round. It's uh, Glaive had gotten one, though, from the back lines, I believe, towards Bomb Train. So they did know he was there. Oh, well, fair play then. But at the same time, he's in a decent position to try and split those players on the site. And the time really was the issue. I think they just had a little bit of a miscalculation that cost them in the end. 16 to 15, Dignitas ahead by one. And with the 10k overtime, unfortunately, on the T side, if you're not getting a bomb plant, especially if they lose this one without one, oh, the buy is not going to be pretty. And people are going to be annoyed. Dignitas then likely take all three rounds and set themselves up fantastically for the next half. This is worrying for Astralis. They need it. If they don't win this one, their chances of winning plummet. They really do. Needing at least one round here on the T side, you'd say, to feel comfortable then move it into their second half. Even then, they'd need a uh, flawless CT to actually get the victory. So, would be aiming for a little bit more. Right now, setting themselves up for the A split again. Molotov in towards the site. I don't think that landed. I think that actually failed as it went a little bit too high, apparently. So, still giving room for the CTs to play around the bomb site, but they find the opening in towards Ivy, at least. But Forrest is ready. Already finding one. The Flash actually blinding up a couple of those players as he tried to tap away. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to connect, and the Vice actually finding himself a second on the up has brought this into a four on one now. Dupree, he just says, no, there's no hope in the retake for his as it is 16 to 16. Astralis, they do fire back when it was needed, as you said, that round being so necessary, otherwise their economy would have been in absolute shambles. But now they have the chance to even try and actually get two here on the T side, to try and come out with a lead. Mm -hmm. They don't get the same benefit as Dignitas would have from winning it. Obviously, the economy is still sitting pretty, even a double op setup to make an appearance. That said, it's even glass cannon from Forrest. Not the best, not what you want when you're moving into an OT, but... On this map especially, you might be able to get some of those early engagements. Very scope-centered. Halzerk, look at this aggression. He has pushed right up close to main. They have literally no idea. I was going to say had scope, so he wasn't being completely quiet. But yeah, it really didn't seem like they had any idea. At least being able to find the one-for-one -one trade is not a terrible position to be in. You have one player also rotating through connector, which that Molotov forces forward. Get right goes down Dupree again with the double in the exact same position as he actually closed out that previous round. As it's left on Forrest and Exist once again to try and pull this back. And Exist trying to rotate in through Popdog. It's not going to be allowed. Forrest is all alone. To try and pull back another round here for a dig, which is very unlikely. Stralis, I mean, looking like they'll actually come out with 17 to 16. During regulation, though, to be fair, they did have a pretty good position to close out. Oh, he didn't expect that player to actually be pushed up close. So, yeah, 17 16, it is indeed confirmed. And Dignitas again going to be working from behind here to try and bring it in towards a, a victory for themselves, potentially, which, of course, they're going to need the three rounds here on their T side to get, or at least two to confirm another overtime. This is it. Dignitas were in such a good spot to flawlessly take the CT side. They just needed one more, but Astralis fight back tooth and nail to take that two to one. And now they're the ones in the driver's seat on the defensive side where they did so well at 10 to 5 half.
Big Mantas tagged up early there. Halls are lucky to actually survive that one. Match is just about having the wall in the way. He doesn't get spammed back on at least. For now, we maintain in the 5v5. Utility still sitting pretty for the CT side, though they haven't been baiting into using a lot of it. And 50 HP off of Freiburg after that one. That's a lot of early damage done by Magisk. Ooh, there was potentially some in return there towards Glaive. But he was just about able to step back out of Pop Dog so that it wasn't really too substantial. But yeah, as you said, really good damage in favor of Astralis to kick this round off. And it is one that Dignitas do need. Otherwise, at most, they'll be fighting back into trying to actually get that second overtime on the board, which is not ideal. And this is their map choice, as we said, moving on to Dust2 could be a struggle for them. And right now, setting themselves up again for what is going to be the ace, but they need to actually reclaim control of A main because there is a CT pushed up aggressively. But so far, that's not their biggest worry. It's actually Glaive over towards Ivy picking up a double for himself. Dupree gets one. He makes it easy for Magisk to actually get the trade on the up as well. And Glaive, he finds the hat trick to actually close out that Ivy push all on his own. 18 to 16, two chances for Astralis to go ahead and close out train here and give themselves a map advantage moving on to their map pick, which would be a great position. But I'm still not going to count out Dig. They're coming right back onto the invest uh, investment, of course, here. The op again in the hands of Halzer. And he's been playing quite well. Everyone has been for Dig. They're all contributing. Yeah, when you look back towards how things have panned out across the Astralis buy rounds, their CT side was solid. And this is where Dignitas, they need to really impress us. Turn things around completely. And a quick headshot by Forrest. As Zipnik goes down, the rest of his team going to be making their way out. But Glaive, he just completely double you keyed up through ivy took himself a frag they deal with dupree in the trade though bring it back into a 3v3 they're looking to punish ivy little do they know magisk is there waiting for them and taking freiburg down yeah it's garrett and Halter to keep them alive garrett actually surviving oh. that shot and ends up getting the kill but the vice is going to be a little bit upset about how that one has gone down but his teammates still alive to try and close this one out as Haldzirk falls. It's get right on low health. 23 to pull off the one on two clutch. It needs to be the quad kill in total. We'll go back and retrieve himself the bomb at least. Actually, may have time to run it back around. The only issue is already Magisk in the back line. He can pretty quickly move into the back line Zb to at least try and hold off with the op and get the info of get right pushes forward. But he's not gonna so far. I think they're kind of just willing to let him plant on B. And if he does at that point move in together for the retake. But they also don't have a kit in their possession currently. But they do I would imagine have... they had one in the round, yeah. They have a molly and a nade to work with and get right moving into upper is actually in a lot of danger if he sticks up more aggressively i think he realizes that he's going to try to catch maybe a pop dog player swinging through and run down that clock he has a molly as well and no smoke on the ct side that is free time he can burn off that clock they're already taking a while to move forward they've used up their molly and as they go to the bomb site itself this could be it the nade deployed with no success the molotov he's got it the molly goes down, and that is time. Burned off the clock. They're going to try to deal with him, but it's too late. Get right's won the clutch. He will go down, but that just doesn't matter anymore. They have plenty of money to rebind for this final round of the overtime. And yeah, Get right has managed it. A, a massive play from him. Not even needing to add any more kills. I said he needed to go ahead and pull it up to a quad kill in order to win it, but he didn't need any more. Just outplay them. With that Molotov, as you said, 18 to 17, it was... I would imagine they did have kits in that round. They didn't actually check in the beginning. Normally in overtime, you just presume they do. But uh, obviously, they didn't have them on Glaive or Magisk. And that kind of costs them there in the end. One more attempt for Astralis to close it out here. If not, we will see Dignitas successfully taking it into a second overtime and keeping their hopes alive here, taking their own map choice, which so far has been a chaotic and entertaining game. I have been loving it. Halzerk wanting the early peek towards Ivy. The Molotov went down, making things a little bit more complicated for him. Even if he got that kill, he would have been in a lot of trouble, but Magisk didn't give him any chance. And now we're seeing Dig just group up outside B. They're just going to barrel down and look to deal with them. Zipnix was so good on the CT side and holding B when he was contested. And he comes through again for one. The spray over. I don't know how he deals with Forrest on that. And get right. He won the previous clutch, but now a 1v4. That little bit harder to deal with, unfortunately. And the bomb not in his possession. One minute and ten seconds on the clock. But he's not got that much time because he's in the smoke. It's about to fade and he has to make a move. Fading back through. It sees a player up on top. He's going to look at him eventually, and he catches the kill in time, but up above him, no idea. Zipnix is there, ready to close out the map, Dean, and 19.